From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Abdul. Abdul? You don't know me. So? I have the little business. Well, I'm so happy for you. I hope it's doing well. <laughs> Not bad. Okay, you what... You don't know me, but you're looking for me. Now look, Joe, Abdul... Uh, it, it is a business to uh, get jobs for people, for servants. Oh, the employment agent. Ah. Uh. Have you got the address of that girl who worked for the Countess Dottolia? Oh, sure. You're very lucky. She's very pretty. You've got the wrong idea, Abdul. I just want to talk to her. <laughs> sure. Where does she live? For $20, I will remember. I'll give you 10 No, she's worth more. Look, knock it off. i got to find her and talk to her fast while I'm still alive. And while she is. <laughs> Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Algiers, North Africa, to the Home Office Transworld Fidelity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Lorco Diamonds Matter. $100,000 $100,000 worth missing. Expense account continued. <laughs> Item 9, $15 even. Gratuity, tip, gift, bonus. Ah, oh, why kid about it? It was a bribe. To a man named Abdul for the address of a girl named Chata. An address up in the native quarter, the Casbah. But the idea wasn't romance, no matter what Abdul thought. Four hours earlier in the Countess Dattelia's apartment, somebody had turned on the gas and tried to kill one or both of us. It was nine to one that the somebody was Chata the servant. I wanted to ask her why. I'd put my coat on and was just on the point of leaving my hotel. I slipped a gun into my side pocket and moved over to the door. Yeah, who is it? Charlie Barrett. The guy you beat the daylights out of a couple hours ago, you know what I mean? No hard feelings, Tal. I just want to talk it over. All right, Barrett. What's on your mind? You object if I come inside? It's kind of personal, you know what I mean? Probably. All right, come on in. Much obliged. Hey, I didn't know who you were, but when we when we got in that little fracas, that their cop told me about it afterward. Man, you really got a well up on you. You make a fella know he's at it, you know what I mean? Is that why you're here, a post-mortem on the fight? No, 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 it's done and over. You whip me, fair and square, as far as I'm concerned. Hey, by Barrett, guys. if you've got anything to say, let's have it fast. I'm in a hurry to get out of here. Oh, well, I sure don't want to take up no more of your time than necessary. I know how it is. Of course, I'm on vacation now, but back in Chicago, I'm in a meat business. Look, Barrett, will you uh, please... At least in a way I am. I'm in uh, byproducts, actually. You know what they say? Use everything but the squeal. Well, I'm the fellow that cans a squeal, you get it? Oh, brother. What I come here for was maybe to get it straightened out about that dame. Do you mean the Countess Dottelia? Countess, Countess, them titles are a dime a dozen. I can buy them, sell them like sausages. Well, what about her? Now, look, neighbor, I was figuring to come here and put it to you man to man. You know what I mean? I know what I'm beginning to think you mean. I figure when you seen my position, you'd want to do the square thing. Like anybody on the right side of the fence would. You with me, neighbor? You better drop that neighbor business. I've moved. Well, Dollar, the thing stacks up like this. Now, I already had my claim staked there before you even got in town. I got a lot of money invested in that dame. Barrett, so help me. I've been taking her around places, you know, feeding her, buying her, one thing and another. Why, I was even going to kick through for a 20 grand chunk of ice for her. She and I had that fight last week. You what? That dame's got highfalutin ideas. What fight? What are you talking about? Well, I just put it to her, cold turkey. I told her she had to quit Jenny flipping around with all those other fellas. Or I just wasn't going to have nothing more to do with her. Well, that made her mad, you understand? She lit into me. Man, you ought to hear that dame talk when she's mad. You'd, you'd think hey, that look, she... Hey, look, when was this fight? Was it before the diamonds were sent here? Why, well, sure. Sure, I said if that's the way she was going to act, she could forget about them diamonds. Well, I ain't seen her since or talk to her, but I just can't... I just can't seem to get her off my mind. Now, look, Dolly, you was in her apartment there for two hours and 40 minutes tonight, and I don't like it. It bothers me. Strictly business, Barrett. And I got to get going. Now, I'll wait a minute. You. Wait a minute, Dollar. Just wait a minute. We, we still got something to settle here. Like I told you, I, I got I'll money. bear it. Get out. Hey, you better hold your horses. I don't know if you know the, the name, C.K. Barrett, if that means anything to you. 
But I got influence back there in the United States. So it's the hard way, huh? Look, you just work for that company of yours. You're nothing but an employee. And if you think you can talk to me like you can to some of these foreigners, then... Here, now! Still a sucker for a left. Hello, room service. This is Johnny Dollar. Some drunk just wandered in here and passed out. Would you send up a couple of boys to drag it out in the hall? Expense account item 10, $5.30. A tip to the bellboys and taxi fare to the Casbah. The taxi dropped me off at the end of the causeway, and from there on I walked. It was late, well after midnight. But the narrow, crooked alleys were teeming with life. Some of it out in the open, some of it undercover. Small groups of people met together here and there along the cobbled streets. Men of two dozen tongues and dialects. And women, too, slipped silently in and out of the dark doorways, crouched over tables in the dim-lit cafes and coffee houses. Groups usually fell silent when I passed and stared with hostile curiosity. The Casbah, backwash of North Africa. Little known, seldom bothered, and scarcely policed. And for an outsider, especially at night, more dangerous than dynamite. The address Abdul had given me turned out to be a coffee house, but it could still be legitimate. And there was only one way to find out. What do you want? I want to see Chata. What for? Private reasons. Chata's not here. Where can I find him? Take a seat, table in the corner. Maybe she come. I took the seat, ordered coffee, and waited. A wrinkled old Arab squatted on a rug in the middle of the room and played strange, weird melodies. Gradually, the other patrons went back to their conversations, ignoring me completely. In fact, pointedly. Twenty minutes passed. The girl didn't show. You will, of course, not object, monsieur, if I take the liberty of joining you. No, sit down. Merci. So, you wish to see Chat. Yeah, that's right. Do you know her? Oui, I know her very well. Know where to find her? But naturally, monsieur. I always know where to find her. She's my woman. Ah, oh, so you're the man they call Bobo. Oui, monsieur. The man who poisoned the diamond courier. Oh, monsieur. It is true that I gave him some wine. A little, not much. But I think perhaps it was a bad vintage. Yes, most unfortunate. It was for him. Well, perhaps it was for the best. Life is so uncertain. But I do not wish to think of such unpleasantness. Instead, uh, let us talk about diamonds. Let's talk about killing, or attempted killing. Is Chanda the one who turned on the gas in the Countess's apartment? It is possible that she did that. On whose orders? It was nothing personal, monsieur. I didn't even know that you were going to be there. I see. Then you really meant to... Diamonds, monsieur. That's enough of this foolish talk of killing. All right. All right, what about the diamonds? You were sent here by the company that has insured them. Is that not correct? Yeah, that's right. And this company would like very much to recover these diamonds? That's why I'm here. C'est bien. Now, I'm told that these companies sometimes give larger rewards, agree to an arrangement of a sort. Make a deal, you mean, with no questions asked. Yes, exactly. Now, is this thing true, monsieur? Is it possible that you would... Do you have the diamonds, Bobo? Well, let us say that I'm able to direct you to their location. You could almost call that a confession. Hmm. What does it matter, so long as we are in the Casper? Oh, yeah, sure. I imagine you have been spotted all over the place. At least 30, right in this room. I am in no danger here, monsieur. Tell me something. You didn't pull off this job by yourself. Who else was in on it? I only wish to talk about the diamonds. Well... Can we come to an arrangement? Bobo, I don't make deals with murderers. It is better that you do not use such words, monsieur. It's true, though, isn't it? That is not the question. It is only that I resent the insulting way Bobo! in which you... Bobo, the gendarme! What? Why are coming here? Bobo! Oui, oui, oui. Did you arrange for the police to come here, monsieur? I'm as surprised as you are, Bobo. Ah, consider this matter of the deal. We will talk more at some other time, eh? Allez, go, go, go. 
The patrons rushed for the doors, and in one minute flat, the coffee house was empty. Even the owner was gone. I was the only one left. Three minutes later, the inspector, with a flying squad of 20 men, came bursting in from the street. Well, Monsieur Deller, I'm happy to find you are still alive. Why don't you get lost somewhere? For you, I think it most fortunate that we arrive in time. Oh, sure, in time to follow up the only lead I had in this case. To lose a suspect is better than to lose one's life, Monsieur. Look, Inspector, I was holding a gun in my pocket, covering Bobo from the second he sat down at the table. But, Monsieur, so I... thirty men or not, if it had come to a showdown, he couldn't have done a thing. Because he'd have been the first one to get it, and he's smart enough to have known that. But I thought Let's that... Let's face it, Inspector, you've done it again. You goofed. But I was only thinking that perhaps... Oh, dear, what is to happen next? The shooting was somewhere outside, but it hadn't been the police. All of the inspector's men were inside the coffee house. He gave them orders quickly, and they fanned out to search the area. The streets were empty now, dark and silent, not a soul in sight. We split up into pairs. I worked with Inspector Marcus for a while and left him and searched alone along a narrow side passage. And that's where I found him. He'd been shot three times in the back, and he was dying. Monsieur Dollar. Yeah, Bobo. You, you can't forget that deal, I think. Yeah. It's a little too late for deals now. Who was in on it with you, Bobo? Look, you've got nothing to lose by talking. You know that, don't you? Except my honor, monsieur. As a citizen of the cosmos. Who shot you? A dragon, monsieur. Twelve feet tall. With fiery eyes. All right, Bobo, all right. But just tell me this. Just one thing. Are you the man who attacked the property agent at the airport? The man who slugged André Jourdain? Oui, monsieur. I do it very good. No. Almost I kill him. It's too bad. I... I... A minute or two later, Inspector Marcus came up and we stood there looking down at the dead man lying on the stones of the alley. He was a short man, stockily built with wide shoulders and a deep chest. It was the body of a man of action, of accomplishment. But he'd chosen to be a smuggler, dope peddler, thief, and killer. And now he had become the victim of another killer. Did he say anything, monsieur? Was he able to talk? Yeah, enough. Eh? What is it you mean, monsieur? Do you know who is guilty of this? Yeah, that's right, Inspector. I know the whole story now. The whole filthy, rotten story. There will be the final intriguing episode in our story of the Lorco Diamonds matter tomorrow. Tomorrow night, the odds are set. The last chip is down. It's the last spin of the wheel. And death is the croupier. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 